Hey you guys, welcome to the Redesign with Prima Facebook group. Um, my name is Leah and I am a brand ambassador here at Prima and um, I'm going to be working on this washstand with you guys today. I'm pretty excited to be doing white. I don't do a lot of white and so I decided it was a good day to do white um, and I was inspired by these vintage seed labels. Have you guys seen these? These are these were with the um, the new release. Okay, so these are the vintage seed labels and these were with the new release, I want to say in April maybe. Um, they're pretty new. So they're really cool. Uh, you, they're not necessarily something you would usually pick, but, um, or like I say I would usually pick, but I was really drawn to them for some reason and I just think they're so, so cool. So here's a little picture right here and I'm gonna use them on this washstand. I may only use one, uh, cause I have another washstand I kinda wanna use these on too. So say hi as you guys come on. Let me just X this out so I can see your comments. Um, sometimes I know if you guys are having trouble commenting, um, cause I do have this shared to my page as well, Leah Noel Design Co. So if you guys are having trouble commenting, make sure you like the redesign with Prima group. Um, and if you go into that group, you should be able to comment. I know a lot of you guys have been like, I'm not able to comment. So, um, try that if you're not able to, but I can see Tanya's here. So, Hey Tanya. Um, so I'm going to show you guys these labels a little bit closer up. So I hung these on my chalkboard for about a week and stared at them. Okay. I have a magnetic chalkboard and, uh, I'm going to tell you what, like I love it for hanging transfers up so I can visualize them for a while before I get started. So this is the top and this one connects with this one. Some of these are a little bit, you know, bigger than they look. Okay. So there's a lot of them. You can put these on soup cans. You can do so many different things with these. I'm actually gonna use it on furniture though. So I'm just gonna show you guys these. I'm gonna to just clip these back up real quick so I don't get them dirty. Okay. Um, and then this is the bottom one. And these have some, these, there's about four of these and these are the size of my door. So I'm gonna use the watermelon. Is that watermelon? There's a watermelon on here, it says, Perry Seed Store, um, Florist, it, it's just really cute. Seeds and bulbs, like how stinking cute is that for a little farmhouse kitchen? So, let me just back this up a little. I'm gonna apply it right here and then we're gonna shade it in. And what I mean by shade it in is we're gonna make it look like it's supposed to be on this piece. So I started doing some shading um, through here, just kind of seeing if I liked the look. I do like the look, this, is, this might have to get toned down a little, but we can do that later. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on right here. So a couple things when you guys are using, um, hi Catherine, when you're using transfers on furniture, uh, with Prima, you want to just put it directly on your chalk paint. You don't have to seal beforehand. In fact, um, we prefer that you don't. Okay. Um, and there, when you buy a transfer like this from your retailer, and I did put a link above today so that you guys could find a retailer. Um, I do not actually retail the product. So um, if you're looking for a retailer, you could click that link. If you have trouble finding one, just send me a message on my page and I'm happy to link you to somebody um, that I know will get you your product fast. So this is, this is the one I wanna use. What do you guys think? I'm thinking this one. Um, we could use this one. They kind of get, they kind of vary in size. So I felt like this one was the best size. And then these two, I think I'm gonna use in this other cabinet I have. Um, and I'm just gonna put it right here. And I'm really not thinking I'm gonna put it anywhere else. I just want one. I just want one and then I'm gonna have just hardware pulls. I filled all my holes except for this one. Um, and I'm gonna have hardware pulls, like little antique pulls that I get on Amazon. I'll show you guys. They should be out, they're right here. But I'm waiting, I was gonna drill the holes myself today, but my husband is like a perfectionist when he puts the hardware on, so I'm waiting for him to get home to do it. <laughs> He's better at it than me. But these are my favorite poles. Um, these seem to just go with everything. They kind of complement the antique vintage feel of like painted pieces, but these are from Amazon. Well, hi, Brittany. Okay, so these are from Amazon. These are, I ordered like 20 of these just the other day. Um, I, I've, I've probably went through 50 of these. So, well, I'll probably go through 50 of these by the time this week's over. Um, I've gone through a lot. So these are my favorite. I'm going to actually replace these with the buffet in my house. 
And they're just circles and I like the way, I like, instead of having knobs or poles, I, I prefer a lot of times this look. I just think it looks classy. So these will go here. I'm gonna have the same. So they'll go here, right here. Look at that knob there. Oh yeah, let me see if they could just like. Mm. Isn't that gonna be pretty? I, you know what, maybe I should just stick it in right here so you guys can actually see what it looks like. This is a really cool, um, if my screw is long enough. The hardest part about hardware is finding screws that are long enough. But if you guys are like, I don't know where to find hardware, just check Amazon. And um, when you buy it from Amazon, I search antique hardware poles. That's what I always search. Oh, that's gonna fit on just perfect. I'm just gonna twist this in. I'm not gonna put it in really tight. Um, I just kinda wanna show you guys what, what they look like. Cause hardware is hard. I, I don't always find that hardware is easy to find for a piece, but I find that I find um, little, little like, I find hardware like this that I just really, really like. Look at how nice that looks. It's just simple. It's just gonna kinda bring everything together. And then we'll have one here and one here. So, oh, oh I did paint the back side of my door. Huh. This is what the inside looks like too. So I'll just butter up the inside. Um, I paint the backs of the doors. This one, um, this I don't think the interior of this one will get painted. It's actually in pretty good shape. So we're not gonna pull that because it needs a washer and it's not tight. Hi, Melody. Mel Melody. Okay, so, oh, it's hot in Georgia. It's hot here too, but it's actually, it's, it's in Indiana. It's not, it's not that bad. I have my garage door open today. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this label off and we're gonna apply it on. And then these two I'm gonna save for my other project. So let me see how this is. So this, this transfer is totally connected. They're not separated. Okay, so I thought when I was looking at these, these were separated, they're not. So I'm just gonna carefully cut this down the center. What? Bye, honey. Love you. Yeah. All right. So I just cut my little label off right here. Um, hmm. That might be a little bit longer than I need it. Let me see if I can find a different one I like. Nope. It's going to be this one. Or it could be this one. What do you think? I kind of like the, I've kind of been thinking of this one the whole time. I'm going to go with this one and I'm just going to trim it down a little. So all I'm going to do, it's a little bit longer um, and I'm going to shade it in. So I'm just going to trim it back a little bit. I'm going to just trim all the white off it and it's still going to be a little bit lar larger, but it's going to be okay. This is just a great transfer because you can you can do so many projects with it. Um, but I don't know, I just think it's so stinking cute. I'm not a farmhousey girl. And these made me feel like I gotta do something farmhouse. Okay, so I just trimmed the white off and it's a little, it's gonna be a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right down here, I'm just gonna trim this. Hi, Lisa. I'm just going to trim. So I'm going to make it fit. I'm not going to really trim my edges because, except for the white, because I want my whites to match. But this is, if you could see, it's like an off white. It's a cream color. So I'm going to shade it into the piece. And I'm going to round my corners too. I'm going to go ahead and just take my scissors and I'm gonna round my corners because I think it'll look more organic with rounded corners. So since I still have the paper on here, I just I can just cut and trim and fix with my old haircut and scissors. Okay. Let's see if that's gonna fit right now. All right. So I'm gonna cut just a little bit more off 
just to make it easy on me. I'm gonna trim a little more off the top. Are you going to the library or straight to your cousins? I think I'm gonna stop there. Okay, at the library? Yeah. All right, call me when you get there. I'm gonna call you. From Drew's house. All right, so we trimmed it. Sorry guys, got a mom a little today too. All right, so we have it trimmed down just a little bit. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I don't, oh, you know what? Look at that, it fit perfect. I didn't think I was gonna do that. All right, so now I just wanna place this on here and I wanna make sure it's even. So I'm just gonna kinda get close. Can you guys see okay? I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna just bring this camera down. And bring this in. There we go. Okay, so you can kinda see some of my shading. I got going on. We're gonna do a little bit of that. This was just the practice run, so that's gotta get faded out a little. All right, so I'm gonna just line this up and it doesn't have to, be, I'm not worried about getting it perfect, but I want it pretty good. So I'm just gonna peel the backing off. If you've never used a transfer before, it's like, it's almost like a temporary tattoo. This one's pretty thick. Like there's a lot of pigment in this one. So I'm gonna try not to touch the back. Normally I'd have edges, but since we trimmed them, we don't have them. So we're just going to kind of put it up top like this. Ooh. Over a little this way. And you can see it kind of sticks. So I'm just going to scoop back just a little this is pretty much going to be the only decorative piece I'm going to have on here. My base color is fluff. And the reason it's fluff is because um, fluff is a, fluff, fluff gives a lot better coverage than cotton. And it's a little bit warmer. I love fluff. I, I like both colors for different reasons, but um, fluff is a lot easier to get coverage with. Okay. So that's pretty well lined up. So I'm just going to take the, the transfers come with this stick. If you start doing a lot of transfers, you may want to invest in a little transfer tool. These are kind of cool. Um, and I'm just going to rub this down. And you can see, um, I don't know if you can really see from here, but it, you can see the you can see how different the color is. And so that's where the shading is really gonna help. I actually like the smaller side of this transfer tool the best. And I'm gonna wanna really get it down. Oh, one of the little tricks that I've learned um, that I don't do as often as I should, but I'm doing this on white. Where's the film? Is this the film that I pulled? No. Okay, so this clear stuff, um, sometimes it's good to put a barrier. This clear stuff works best, the stuff that's on here. It's sometimes it's nice to put a barrier on here so that you don't actually like rub on your paint because you could scratch your paint or like get it dirty or sometimes the staining on the stick will like get it dirty so you know you would just want to like have something here to kind of give you a barrier to just get those edges down really good in case you slide out this thing you don't really have to worry so much about the stain that is oh I didn't even think about um do you guys know that the we have um little vegetables like little vegetable molds that would probably be cute on here I don't know if I'll go that far sometimes simple is best sometimes it's not all right it looks like it needs a little bit more If you're afraid of scratching your paints or anything, just put this over it. I don't like to do that. 
Uh, but everyone's different. You, you may be a little bit more afraid of scratching your paint. All right, let me see if it's ready. Um, usually there's like a little like clear coat around here and there's not here. So I just have to kind of pull it off right on there. Um, and I'm just gonna slowly peel it back. I can see that a little bit isn't pushed down right here. So I'm just gonna take my tool. I'm gonna hold this and I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna push it down a little bit. This one probably, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna go on very easy. The more solid they are, the easier they, ha they are to go on. If you have like florals that have a lot of cutouts, sometimes they're a little bit harder to put on. Uh, my base color is fluff. I think, oh, sorry, Mandy, or Mel Melody, I already answered that, but I answered it again. Okay, you guys, I have to tell you, I have to say this because I have so I've had a lot of messages after I'm live. If you guys are having trouble commenting, if you are on my page, Leah Noel Design Co., and you're like, I can't comment, um, if you guys go to the Redesign with Prima group and ask to be accepted there, you should be able to comment. Um, but I've had a lot of you guys reach out and you've said, I can't comment. So if you guys like that group and you guys go into that group, you should be able to comment in there. Okay, let's see. Uh, Kelly asks, what waxes are best to deal over transfers? I'm about to do my first transfer this weekend. Seal. Okay, so I find that um, um, oil-based waxes or like, like, um, like Authentico has a good wax for over transfers. DIY, Debbie's Design Diary is a good wax for over transfers. Um, I don't find that the Dixie Bell wax works well over the transfers at all. And um, I use all Dixie Bell, so I use the clear coat satin. So if you wanted to use a wax, I would recommend using a different brand. Um, but I really like the clear coat satin. Okay, so I'm just gonna adhere this down. And uh, I'm gonna burnish it a little bit. Let me grab my burnisher. So these are, this is a pad. This is from Dixie Bell. You can get this at the link above. These are, these are like, these are like, um, they're like scratchy pads and they just have the right amount of texture to kind of just burnish or transfer in, which helps it. I cut them in half. You can tell this one's been used. Um, and sometimes some, like it, it helps take some, like right here is from transfers I've rubbed on before. It helps kind of take off some of the excess of the transfer. Um, this one, I really don't have to worry about it but I'm gonna do it anyway. And um, one of the things I'm thinking I may do is sand these sides in a little bit. Where's my sandpaper? Let me just grab my sandpaper. Okay, so I'm gonna try, let's see what grit this is. This is a thousand grit. I want something like 500, 250, 500, all right, 500 will be, 500 soft enough to where if I don't like it, it'll be okay. So I'm going to sand my sides in just a little bit right here, just to kind of make them wear into the paint just a little bit. You can distress your transfers. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just distressing my sides. And I may take this color, I don't know, I kind of like it bright. If I wanted to make this more like worn look, I can take this color down by just by sanding it. So I just sand right over it. But you could see the paint and the transfer starting to come off on that sandpaper. it kind of bright so my last step to making this look like part of this piece then we're pretty much done you guys it's gonna be so so simple um, the tran is the transfer backwards lettering yeah it, it probably is um, the transfer since it's it's a live video the transfer is probably backwards so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna um, we're gonna blend this in we're gonna make it look like part of the piece so I'm gonna use this brush from redesign with Prima um, I love these flat round brushes in all the sizes. They're stenciling brushes. They're stenciling. I call them flat round, but they're stenciling. This is really good for shading. So as far as shading goes, shading is um, 
Something that takes a little bit of time. No, you know, it's just it's one of those things, I guess it's, once you get the hang of it, it's a little bit easier. Um, but it takes a minute to get the hang of it. So this brush I had used earlier and I haven't even cleaned, it's dry. So you can see how little of paint, like the paint didn't even ruin my brush because it was just such a small amount. So I'm dipping this in caviar and this is caviar from Dixie Belle, okay? So this is chalk mineral paint and I'm just dipping my brush in. I'm getting a little bit on. You see how little that is? And then I'm gonna wipe it off on my paint rag. And I'm gonna take most of it off. And then I'm gonna knock it on the sides of this. So I'm literally gonna like take more off by just knocking my sides a little. And then I'm gonna put it right here in the corner and I'm gonna circle it. All over this. I'm gonna get a little more paint. Just a tiny amount. I'm gonna wipe it on my rag. And then I kind of start feeling out, you know, how much paint is on my brush by just tapping my edges. And then going in and circling. And I am gonna actually go outside of the box a little bit too. And I'm gonna go all the way over this transfer with it, just to make it look more worn. In fact, I may actually just go over it with a little sandpaper so I get a little more texture. But sometimes the sandpaper will make your, um, you're fine, Roz. Sometimes the sandpaper will make your lettering run. So just be aware of that. So I'm just gonna try a little bit with a really light hand. And it's not really running. This is 500 grit sandpaper. But I don't really wanna lose the brightness of it. I just kinda of wanna wear it in a little. You can see the transfer starting to come off a little on my I don't know that I'm gonna go all the way across. I'm gonna wear it in just a little more. Just kind of like when I'm doing this, I'm just kind of deciding how, a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, one of the things I'm trying to really avoid is distressing. I don't wanna distress my edges for two reasons. First of all, I hate distressing. I hate, I don't like going across here with sandpaper. I don't like the dust. I just don't like, just, I love the way distressing looks. I don't like to do it. So that's why I do a lot more of the shading. Um, the second thing is sometimes distressing will cause bleed through with your paint, especially when you're using a chalk paint, when you seal it, which means like you'll have like yellow spots around the parts that you distressed. So I don't like distressing. So this shading is kind of my replacement for distressing because distressing is my least favorite thing to do. If you ever notice, some of us like don't glaze, some of us don't distress. So I'm just wearing this in and you can kind of see that the texture of the wood, uh, you might not be able to see it on camera, but some of the texture of the wood is showing through right here. We're gonna just go ahead and keep going with it. Hey, I'm doing a video right now, but if you um, if you go knock on the door, my mother-in-law's in there, sure. and she can help you. Okay, yeah, good. thank you. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead 
and keep um, going with this. Our water went out yesterday and so they're coming by to get water samples. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of dirty it up a little bit. Okay, what do you guys think? Do you like the way it looks? It's starting to fade in a little bit more. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and shade the corners right here too for you guys. And if you notice, I didn't really touch my brush. And I'm just gonna pull it right into here. Okay. I'm going to come down here and this is just really what's making it's making a big difference this is what's bringing it from plain white furniture to something unique thank you Kathleen it's the natural light <laughs> we got some natural light going today all right, love this piece. I don't usually prefer farmhouse either, but this one is cute with the transfers. Um, I find that the um, wash stands, these style wash stands are really good for um, farmhouse. They're really good for farmhouse. So I'm kind of gonna dirty it up by my hinges because that would be natural. And again, this brush you guys can find at the Find a Retailer link. Um, these are my favorite brushes. They also have this brush. I noticed on the redesign site they have. I ordered it because I wanted to try it and I haven't. It seems a little, this is a stencil brush and this is a 10. This is Art Basics from Finnebar. This one seems a little more scratchy though. This one is a lot softer. So I'm going to keep going through here. We're going to keep shading. I know it looks a little bit blo more blot. I feel like it looks a little more blotchy on video than it does here. If you don't like the, you can always tone this down with waxes. You can always do this with waxes. If you don't want to do it with paint, you can do it with waxes in the same way. So if I start getting it, if it looks scratchy like this, because this does look scratchy, um, it means I have too much paint on my brush. So I'm just going to go back through. I'm going to wipe it with a baby wipe. And the nice thing about Dixie Bell is um, it has a built-in sealer, so I don't really have to worry about wiping that off. I'm just gonna let that dry. Wipe my brush out a little more. And then we're just going to keep creating balance here. Hey, Erin. Hi, Sharon. Okay. I'm just wiping my brush out. And I keep just shading it in. Let's try this. Oh, that corner's still a little wet. So I'm just going to kind of go around here, I guess. Can you guys see down here? Let's get a little down here. Actually knock it off on my um, my edges here too. Let's see if we can. I need a washer in this really bad. My screw just went all the way through my hole. That 
caught funny again. I think it wasn't all the way dry. I'm just gonna wipe this back and come back to it. Okay. Um, another thing I thought about doing, be like as I was putting this on, um, I might just pull in a little bit of sawmill gravy to make this blend in a little more. I'm gonna do that live right now. Let me just grab my color. Just to kind of make it fade in, it looks like it's, it's sticking out just a little bit. I like the way it's shaded, but I feel like it needs to just blend in just a little more. So I'm gonna try using, um, this is French linen. I'm thinking sawmill or drop cloth or sawmills would be the best. Sawmill, yep, nailed it. All right, so I'm just gonna open up my paint. And I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit with a brush. So that's, this This color is just closer to sawmill gravy than it is the fluff. So I'm just gonna see if I could just get this transfer to just kind of paint a little bit and just kind of get it to blend in a little more. So I just put some on and I wiped it off. And I'm just gonna pull it over this line and then I'll probably end up shading over it again. But just so it kind of blends in a little better. See, it's already blended. Can you guys see the difference? I don't know if you can on video, but it just blended it just a little bit better. It made that line just a little less obvious. Um, and honestly, looking back, I might have uh, it might have been a better idea to paint this door sawmill gravy. Just this frame before I put this on. But yeah, when I don't ever think of those things till after, <laughs> ever. So I'm just fading that line in a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back over it with the, I'm gonna shade right back over it with the caviar. Let's see if our corner's dry enough. Do you see how different this color is than the fluff? Let's see if we can just hit this corner so we can have a perfect door. But I think that's just enough. Then we'll have just hardware here, here on the top drawers. And that's pretty much it. We'll be, um, we'll be done. I'm keeping this one simple. And I will seal it with clear coat. I'm gonna distress by my hardware too a little bit. Who knows? I may actually distress this piece too, but I just don't like distressing. Okay. Okay. It's pretty much um, simple and easy, and how to just blend in that transfer. And I still have all. So I use this on one piece of furniture. I still have all these labels to use. So we're gonna be doing, I just picked up another uh, wash stand and some of these labels are gonna go on that because I just love, I just love them. Especially for a farmhouse look. It's just something a little bit more. Um, just something to bring your work a little bit like, 
not just plain and white, you know, just a little something. Um, I don't know that I would like, you know, I, I'm open to opinions. I don't know that I would really like I don't know if I would, that I would really like one on each drawer. I think it would be too much. So we're just sticking, sticking with this um, little cutie. And then I'll, I'll probably position this as a coffee bar. This one's a little short, um, but I'll probably position this as like a coffee bar. And when I get ready to stage it, I'll put like coffee on it. It'll be a really good, um, these wash stands are great coffee bars. If it, if it had the hooks above, which are like the towel bar, some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. I like to hang the coffee cups from that. Um, but for the most part, it'll just be cute and like this. So um, if you guys don't already, like my page, Leah Noel Design Co. Um, and I will post this there. This will be for sale probably Sunday evening. And um, if you guys are, I'll also post it in this group too. So, all right, you guys, thank you guys. Hi, Sherry. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I will be back next Tuesday with something fun again. And other than that, have a great week. Bye-bye.